This is the third video in a series about the A-level chemistry topic of transition metals, designed with the AQA course in mind, and this one is all about the shapes of complex ions. Assuming that you've watched the previous video about complex ions and ligands and substitution reactions, and that your knowledge of the AS chemistry topic of bonding is relatively secure, then there's actually very little for you to worry about here, because the shapes of complex ions are the same shapes that we use for molecules, um, with the advantage that there are fewer options to pick from, so everything's slightly more straightforward. So there are really four options. You can have a complex ion that is octahedral, where there are six bonding ligands, tetrahedral, where there are four, square planar, where there are also four, and linear, where there are just two. So to start with, let's look at octahedral. Now, as you know from the AS chemistry topic of shapes of molecules, where you have a single atom with six bonding pairs around that, that will form what we call an octahedral shape. And that might sound like there should be eight bonding pairs, but the reason is that where you have um, a geometrical shape that has six vertices, it's going to have eight faces, hence the name octahedral. So where you've got a complex ion that has an octahedral shape, the central transition metal ion is going to have a coordination number of six in that it's going to make six dative covalent bonds. And that could be because it's bonded to six monodentate ligands like water or ammonia. It could be bonded to three bidentate ligands or it could be bonded to one hexadentate ligand. Now, not all of those ligands have to be the same as each other. So it's possible to have six monodentate ligands bonded where some are of one form and some are of another. And we've already seen an example of this when we looked at the partial substitution of ammonia into hexaanqua ions. Um, and when this happens, it's possible to have what we call cis-trans isomerism. Um, so isomerism, as you know, is to do with where we have the same atoms, but just rearranged in different geometric space. And cis-trans isomerism is basically a special form of EZ isomerism. And it's where you're talking about the... Um, the ligands that are the same as each other being either on the same side, which is what we call cis, or on opposite sides, which is what we call trans. So if you look at the two pictures over here on the right, in both instances, we've got four water ligands and then two chloride ligands. And in the cis isomer, they're both on the same side of the chromium atom um, at the centre. And then if you look at the trans isomer, they're directly opposite one another. Now, that's going to happen when we have monodentate ligands. When we have bidentate ligands, we may be able to see optical isomerism or um, chirality. You're hopefully already familiar with the idea of optical isomerism from your organic chemistry, but just in case, here is a little refresher. So the easiest way to get your head around optical isomerism or chirality is to look at your hands. And if you put them palm to palm, then they superimpose beautifully. But if you put them so that they're both facing the same way, like if both your palms are down um, and you put one on top of the other, then you can't superimpose them. You can't make them match up because they're not actually exactly the same shape. They're mirror images of each other. And we see the same thing uh, with molecules and other chemical structures as well. So um, for our transition metal complex ions, you have a chiral center, which is, you know, the atom or ion at the center of the complex. Um, and then you have these other groups around it. And where you have the bidentate groups, um, then you can start to see optical isomerism and you can have an enantiomer that twists right or one that twists left. And as you know from your organic chemistry, these are going to um, respond differently to plane polarised light in that one of them will rotate the light one way and one of them will rotate the light the other way. Um, so here we've got two complex ions um, with copper, with two um, chloride ions, which are obviously um, monodentate ligands, but also two ethylene diamine ligands, which are bidentate. And therefore we can have um, a right handed version and a left handed version. Next up is everybody's favourite shape from AS, the tetrahedron. Um, so just like you would have um, with a methane molecule or an ammonium ion, um, we've got four bonding groups, four ligands in this case, around our central um, transition metal atom or ion. And you're most commonly going to encounter this when you've got a cobalt two plus ion or a copper two plus ion surrounded by four chloride ions. So this is the shape that we're going to be left with when you have a substitution reaction where four chloride ions replace the six water molecules in a hexaaqua ion. 
Now, annoyingly, you can't just rely on the fact that there are four ligands to say that a complex ion is definitely tetrahedral because it could also be square planar. But this tends to be limited to examples where the central ion is either silver or nickel. There is one other example, however, and it's a named example that there's a lot more detail about elsewhere in the spec, um, and this is called cisplatin. So cisplatin is a complex with um, a platinum two plus ion. And as the name would suggest, it's the cis isomer. There is also a trans isomer where the chloride ions are on opposite sides of the molecule and the important thing about cisplatin is that it's a really good anti-cancer drug and it works by stopping DNA replication because of a ligand substitution reaction and you'll learn more about that in a different bit of the course. The final shape that you need to know about the complex ions although you do still need to know all the others for just general molecules is the linear shape and this is going to happen when you only have two ligands um, and a really good example of this is the silver complex that is part of Tollens reagent. I hope that was useful. Coming up next, there are going to be videos about the formation of coloured ions, oxidation states and the catalytic activity of transition metals. So don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out. And thanks for watching.